Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, I love you. Say, neighbor, I love you. More than I love chocolate. Hallelujah. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. Let's have a seat. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, I was listening to testimonies. Wow. They are all sweet. So for me to dress like this, I had someone who mentioned waiting. Oh, <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. That's why I say, okay. Show show wait and that's it, okay. I say, okay, let, let me also go and celebrate wedding. And that's it, you know, when you are celebrating wedding, you have to look different. So, even. The way you walk must change. So you have to walk like this. Yeah. Hallelujah. Do you have your Bible there? Do you have your Bible? Ask your neighbor where is your Bible. Say neighbor where is your Bible? Hallelujah. Yes. When you see me talk about Jesus Christ, because he's the owner of my soul, tell your neighbor, say neighbor, when you see me talk about Jesus Christ, because he's the owner of my soul. Hallelujah. Yes, that must be our confession. When you see a genuine Christian, even wherever you met, you can find a genuine Christian asleep. Just talk about Jesus Christ. Say, neighbor, talk about Jesus Christ. Tell me about Jesus. And I will hear you. Hallelujah. Do you have your Bible? Let's run to the book of Mark. I love this book. On the whole and well. Hallelujah. Mark 5. Marukosa on Titano. We'll start our reading from verse 29. Until 34. 34. Mark 5, 29. Oh, Milongo by no way. Till thirty four. Milongo na tunani. Hallelujah. Amen. Daddy Tinga Moshuambo. Marcosa five, eh? On Titano, Casha Milongo by no way, Fio Milongo na tunani. O potu o po eticolo hon, de aye o laoka, de lo good did the molu to lie at the Luca Cotuae. De la diva Jesus, a she who did the muemene, muemene, eh, one O Papungu Kila Moka Tikova no de Tati, O Yelia Kumakoshi Kutushanki, O Varonga Vae, O Vachakue, O Ve, O Wetovanu Tabe Kufini Niken de Toti, O Yelia Kumangi, Deo Kwali Takioka Mone O Eshaninga, O Kainu Wakara Tila, de Takakama, O Shesho Kwali Eshi Nubian in Kilo, O Kwe and Deta will commerce your hair, De Dem Hepa Ole, O Shiria Ishi. Yes, so watch up where on one get a ton. A tavelo loe or a cuvelula in the non billy of your calo of your local boy. Hallelujah. Immediately her breathing stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once Jesus realized. 
that power had gone out of from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my crow? You see the people crowding against you, his disciple answered. And yet you can ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Mm. You know, yesterday, I had a, a quiet time. Around evening time. Around evening time. I had a quiet time just talking to my master and he gave me this scripture Mark 5 verse 29 till 34 so if you look at the beginning the Bible mentioned about the woman who had a problem of breathing she was breathing non-stop breathing the Bible says she tries all what she could, she could do she went to different doctors she went to which doctors but nothing no one could stop this woman she was a chosen woman there are those that are chosen and whatever they go through their situations are not there to disgrace them but they are there for the glory of God this woman heard about Jesus Christ. She had never seen him. She heard about him. When people were talking about Jesus, what he has done, but through hearing, her faith was matured. There are many believers today coming to Jesus with unmatured faith. The Bible says we cannot please God without faith. This woman tells herself if I could only touch him listen to that if I could only touch him not him praying for me not him casting out demons but if I only could touch him then I will be healed Jesus had disciples and he had many people who were following him. When he was trying to touch Jesus, there were those who were pushing him away, oh, pushing him away because they don't want to have to touch Jesus. But because he believed and Jesus said, only if you believe then you will see we don't see first and believe we believe first then see Amen. everything that we need from Christ he has given it unto us Jesus was walking and this woman she took a step of faith she spoke 
spoke a language of faith. She took a hand of faith and touched Jesus. By touching Jesus, she withdrew her healing from Jesus. Jesus said, who touched me? Because he felt power leaving his body. He felt power healing power coming from his spirit going to someone. The disciples said, Master, how can you ask who touched you? If you look at the crowd, look at how many people are touching you. That means, before this woman comes to Jesus, there were people who were touching Jesus. Even when she touched Jesus, she was not alone to touch Jesus. But then they did not receive anything because they took him as an ordinary man. Many Christians today, you are here, but since you become born again, you never receive miracles. Since you become born again, you never felt the power of God in your life. How many people you invite to church, they give testimonies. When will you give your money? It's not about touching Jesus. But it's about touching him with faith. Because this woman, her touch was not an ordinary touch. Her presence to Jesus, when she pressed her hand unto Jesus, it was not an ordinary touch. There are those who say, oh, I'm born again. I'm born again. If we we say we are born again, we are part of Christ. Our lives must be testimony. Our lives must be testimony. The bleeding situation, the bleeding situation was allowed for a reason. God permits this woman to go through tough times. He permitted this woman to go through bleeding for many years just for a reason. When we that are part of Christ, the Bible says they have chosen us from the beginning. They are chosen people. If you are chosen and God is looking for you, there is no way you can hide. Christianity it's not about forcing someone to go to church. It's not about saying I will give you money for you to receive Jesus Christ. It's not about I will take a gun in order for you to receive Jesus Christ. Christ does not force anyone. If you are chosen, you are just chosen. When we the gospel, we must preach a freely gospel. You can't force someone to receive Christ. Because Christianity is a relationship. And you cannot force someone to, to be in a relationship. To enter a relationship. Because God looks in our hearts. You can be here because your father is here. You can be here because your wife is here or your husband is here. You can be here because you want marriage. But if your heart is not connected, you will go back home empty. We approach the fall of grace. 
There is a lot we need to do in our hearts. Look at many of you. You are praying in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. But you are putting God a test. There is no belief in heart. God is not a wish doctor. Tell the neighbor God. Is not a wish doctor. Yes. You can go to wish doctor with offense in heart, with unforgiveness in heart. You can roll your soul crying, but not true in front of wish doctor. But when we come to God, the one who can give the solution to our problem, we must be free from offense. We must be disconnected from offense of the past. But look at many of you today. You say, Lord, I worship you. But look what is in your heart. Jesus said, ask anything. Ask in my name. And you shall receive it. Blessed are those who have pure heart. And the Bible says, we are the minds of God. That refers to our hearts. If we are the minds of God, then we must be pure in heart. The Bible says, be holy. Because your father is holy. There is no way that sin can run away from us. We run away from sin. Tell your neighbor, there is no way that sin can run away from you, but run away from sin. But look at many of you. You see there is fire ahead of you, but you are just walking. Fire is ahead. Christ cannot force anyone for us to receive from him. That is your decision. If you want to receive from God or you don't want to receive from God. It is your decision. And all what we receive from God depends on the relationship that we have with God. If you are closer to God, then also what you receive will be big. If you are far from Him, you will receive little from Him. But look at many of you. You are here to say, I want blessing. Oh, breakthrough. But you don't want the source. We must go to the source. Source of healing. Source of blessing. Source of breakthrough. Which is Jesus Christ. Christianity is light in the heart. It is light in the heart. It's in your heart. As you are there, there's your body and your spiritual body. But many of you, you only consider about this body, this physical body. You want to look beautiful. You want to go to church looking beautiful. But if you look at your spiritual body, very dirty. That's why such people, they will tell you I'm a Christian. I'm born again. I'm part of Christ. But look at their character. Look at their behavior. Being holy is not only when we are in church, but our relationship with Christ is tested behind us. 
not in public. Because public you want to receive honor from people. Yes, God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. But behind doors, when you are alone, when you are alone, when no one can see you, that is the time your relationship with God get tested. What you see happening in our midst is not something that just appears now. It is an agreement behind doors with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, go in your room, cross the door, and pray to the Father who sees in secret places will you watch it. But you look what is happening today. Majority prays to Jesus. They say, Lord, give me. Lord, heal me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, deliver me. But see, how many people have been praying for you now? More than thousand pastors who prayed for you, who prayed for your deliverance, who prayed for your healing. But now it is happening. That is in your heart. You need to research your heart. The Bible says, put God first. You know when God is first, He will protect you. He will guide you. He will control you. He will tell you what to do. Do, and what not to do. Thank you, sir. So this is you. Oh, And this is God. Oh, Kalunga. When you put God in front, stand there, sir. Stand behind you. Just hold. This is God. Oh, Kalunga. And this is you. Oh, okay. Can I just make an example of you? Thank you, sir. So you will be Satan. Oh, oh Satan. <laughs> so now you are not a Satan. Oh, this is you have a Satan. Eh? You will be Satan. I should talk about Satan. <laughs> Can you hear spirit of poverty here? Thank you, sir. Oh, my boy, my boy. Marital problem here. My boy, my boy. Poverty here. Marital problem here. Let me remove my puppy, otherwise it will become something also. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Satan. Satan. Don't care with our past. Because we were already there. But. He is stopping us to reach our destiny. Can you be destiny, sir? Thank you. You are destiny. Thank you. So now, look at the beautiful destiny that is ahead of you. Very beautiful. This is the will of God for your life. This is the plan of God for your life. The plan of God for your life. But now look at the soldiers that are on your way. You look at that? So but now if you put God first, if you put God first then anything, you can walk Push them away from the road. You go, hold it. <laughs> what a nice guy. <laughs> you see what happened? <laughs> you have decided to put God first. <laughs> so he pushed away <laughs> all what is ahead of him. <laughs> Can you just come back, sir? <laughs> yes. Now, many of you love money. You put your money first. 
And you put God behind. Okay. Oh. Stop him. Go. Try to make your way. <laughs> Try to make your way. Try to make your way. You see what is happening? Because you put money first, you put your career first, you put your marriage first, you put your business first, see what is happening. You cannot reach your destiny. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. you see what is happening? What you put first matters whether you will reach your destiny or you will not reach your destiny. If you put God first, if He becomes the master of your life, no matter what comes in front of you, no matter you encounter, the Bible says you shall pass through fire and it shall not burn you. You shall pass through rivers, but you shall not go down. You shall climb on top of mountains. If you put God first, you are an overcomer. Whatever we go through, we that we put God first cannot defeat us. Every Christian, every believer has to write a test and examination. There's a test and examination. It's not about you entering a class of tests. It's not about you entering a room of examination. But it's you overcoming. It's you passing through. Our Christianity is tested after the hardship that we went through. When we overcome, that is the time you can say I'm a child of God. I know who I am. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But look at many of you. You say greater is he that is in you. But at the same time, your situation is chasing you. Majority of you, you are good to run. Now you are running and your situation is chasing you. And at the same time you are saying, greater is he that is in me. That is not our nature. Look at this woman that has been preaching. After going all what she went through and trying to Look for her own solution. She took a decision. She did not look at the disciples. How many people were throwing Jesus? The Bible says that Jesus was surrounded by a crowd. It was a big crowd. And this woman was a rejected woman. Because every time she was bleeding and she was smelling, no one wanted to be associated with her. But even if people were mocking her, people were persecuting her, people were pushing her away, people were laughing at her. She did not give up. She said, I don't belong here. This is not my destiny. My destiny is ahead of me. Look at the case of Joseph. Joseph was rejected. His own brother doubted about him. They could not believe when they say, I dream about this. Every day you are dreaming, every day you are dreaming. He was rejected. They sold him. But there is a story behind that. Before they sold him, they wanted to kill him. They throw him in a dry pit. But because God has a purpose, and because he was a chosen boy, 
loi. God did not allow his enemy to kill him. Whatever we go through, either bleeding, financial bleeding, business bleeding, career bleeding, mental bleeding, whatever you go through, just relax. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, relax in the arms of the Holy Spirit and he will come as we.